Long ago, the world was under the control of the gods, both just and menacing. All things happened because the gods willed it. But then one day, the will of the gods disappeared, and man was left to his own devices. Many centuries have passed, and the gods' voices have been silent. But now, a new group of adventurers may stumble upon the secrets of the legends of the Forgotten Gods. Two, one. We are recording. All right, last time we left off, uh, we had, where the hell is it? There it is. This guy was dead. Garthianaga was blinded. And the bow and the Baylor's laughing at you guys. I don't quite see what's funny. Look at him. Now I do forget the initiative order, so let's re-roll new initiative. Okay. Uh, let me pull up Gotham's stuff. Okay. Uh, that's uh, straight up ten. I know we ended on a player's turn. I don't remember which player. Come on, stay on the fucking table. <laughs> that would be a three for Gothram. Add up to the three, three. That will be a nine for Guardian Naga. And a seven for the Bait Lord. Please, Chris, we're all about the 10. 12. 12 with Sorry, the I got Actually, six. 12. <laughs> Actually, 12 with the Baylor, so. So, Baylor goes first. Okay. Well, okay, I guess my plan of not taking any more damage is probably not. So, as far as I, as far as I remember, I know, I think Gotham did a bless on us, if I remember right. Yes. Um, I did Heroes Feast, which... Um, for a refresher, if I let me pull up that card in here real quick. Uh, yep, okay. So it does. So everyone who did that feast, which is all of us, um, not any of the enemies, of course, uh, the cure, cured of all diseases and poison, become immune to poison and become frightened, uh, make, and make a wis all wisdom saving throw with advantage. Uh, our hit point maximum also increases by 2d10, and, and we gain the same number of hit points. So if I remember correctly, it was 7. And they last for 24 hours. Hmm. And the bless... Okay, I have a question. Has anybody before. directly hit the Baylor with a melee attack? I don't remember. I don't think so, but I have hasted uh, Max's character, so... Yeah. All right. So I do know the Baylor has taken some damage. It wasn't much. Yeah, yeah that was from my sunburst. All right. All right, so it's the Baylor's turn. Okay. All right. All right, he's going to look at... Uh, he's going to hit Barry with his whip. Okay. That's 23 what, hit. 23. Uh, haste brings your AC up by 2, right? Yep. Uh... <laughs> well, stuff off my phone. I don't remember why I have a miscellaneous modifier of eight. Um, from a, I think it does. Pretty sure it does. Even. All right. Well, you'll be taking three D, well two D, six, uh, slashing damage. 
Okay. So 15 damage from that, plus 3d6 fire damage. Well, damage from fire damage. Wait, and what then, was the first damage type? It was slashing. Okay, so I only take eight of that. All right. And then how much fire damage? Twelve. Okay. And now That's make it. me Wait. a DC twenty strength saving throw. Are we not gonna make it? But we'll see what happens. Um, nine. You get pulled all the way up to the Baylor. Oh no. And now since you're within five feet of him, uh fire aura activates. So a uh, start which means at the start of the Baylor's turn, each okay. creature within five feet takes three D six fire damage. Oh fuck me. And if you hit the Baylor with a melee attack, you automatically take three D six fire damage. What the All right. Uh, are you? Tr- Why? Why is that? It says it right here on the card. Damn. <laughs> Freaking hell, dude. Okay. Just hey, I, I tried telling Kirk you guys needed him. It's, it's within five feet of the Baylor? Yeah. <clears throat> Good to know. Good to know. He said, he said that happened at Max the start of his turn, right? in the same space as him. Almost. Jesus. Okay. But so, it's still the Baylor's turn. Okay. He's gonna hit you with the longsword now. Okay. That sounds good to me. I need to check. And his sword swings and he gets stuck right in the ground. Issuing either an attack of opportunity or an attempt to flee. Uh, attack of opportunity. I rolled a natural one. <laughs> Wait, is this an act, this is this Barry's attack of opportunity against him? Yes, for Barry. Okay, let me roll it. Uh, Are you doing a melee attack? Um, can I do a spell attack? I mean, like you're five, you're literally like this close to him. So it's okay. up to you. Um. Okay. Um, Here's what I'm going to do. Actually, no, that's not a good idea. Now I think about it. Um, What what can I do? What can I do? You do have the chance to uh, let you run 15 feet back. Okay. But if you do, you don't get these attack opportunities. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna run 15 feet back, back towards um, Kaden. towards uh, Caden. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. You have a lot of ranged capabilities. Yeah, I also right. think I know what I'm gonna do next. So, mm-hmm. all right, who rolled lower than? Well, who rolled higher than a seven? It'd be me because I rolled a ten. And what's your roll, uh, Chris? Oh, wait, what did we roll? I didn't hear a roll. In- initiative. Oh, um, my roll was a six. Okay, Okay. so you go, af- you go after the Guardian Naga, which goes after uh, Max, but the Guardian Naga uh, is blinded, which means it has disadvantage on attacks, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. It also, okay. yeah, I don't think it knows where we are if we've moved. So good luck finding us, Guardian Naga. You could flail around, I guess. Okay. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do with my first action. I am going to cast Stone Skin on Caden. I don't uh, know, was that blinding a charmed or poison effect? I don't think so. Okay. Blinding shouldn't have been jumped or poison effect as far as I know. So stone okay. skin. What? Okay. Uh, stone skin is a fourth level spell. It turns the flesh of a willing creature you touch as hard as stone until the spell ends. 
Uh, you have resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Nice. Cuckoo. Uh, and then for my second action, what I'm going to go ahead and do, is I'm going to guide and bolt this fucking Naga. I'm going to kick his ass. You're going after the Guardian Naga? Yeah. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a third level spell. Third level guiding bolt. So my spell attack is a plus nine. Let's see what I roll. That one was cocked. <coughs> it was on side. A what? That one was on its side. It was on its side. It was like, uh, it was kind of weird. Uh, okay. 20, okay, it's a 21 to hit. Yes, that hits. Okay, so it'll be 6d6 of damage. Five, six. Okay. That is... Six, nine, fourteen, eighteen, nineteen... 25 and that naga uh the next the next roll the next attack roll made and say has advantage all right also do remember to add your d4s as you do have bless on you thanks to gothra all right so it's is that the end of your turn uh Is that a okay? That's one action. Yeah, that's that's it. All right. Well, since you just hit the naga, it's gonna hit you back. But yes, I know it has disadvantage. Okay. It can, att- but it was a ranged spell. Oh, it was. And that it was guiding bolt, right? No, it has disadvantage because it's blinded. Yeah, I'm I'm saying though it can react to a ranged spell. No, it's its turn. Yeah, it's its turn. Oh, it's turn. Okay, my bad. Well, I missed anyway, so <laughs> losing my mind. Sorry, ignore me. And Maybe now me. it is uh, Chris's turn. All right, Chris, yeah. go for it. <clears throat> this is why I asked if you have a lot of ranged capabilities because I have a circlet of concentration. And I can have two concentration spells up. I'm going to be casting Wall of Stone around myself. (laughs) And if you aren't capable of doing a lot of ranged damage, I don't want to keep you stuck in here with me. I can do some ranged damage. I can do a decent amount of ranged damage. Cool. It's going to be 10 foot diameter, so 20 foot radius. That's completely encircling. Uh, Except for. How big? How how much room is there all together? Um, basic. I'm making it. I'm making it long enough that we would not be able. It's it's a ten foot diameter. So no matter where around the wall of stone, and it's going to be a dome around us. No matter where the um, Baylor is, we're not going to be hit by it. We're not going to be within five feet of it. Wait, so is it just is it just around you, or is it around both of us? If you're right next to me, you said you retreated to me. Yeah. Oh, not Gotham. Sorry, Gotham. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, over by the snake guy. Yeah. So yeah. I can have that on us, and then um, I leave a small opening in the dome for us to shoot our spells out of. But because we are surrounded by a dome, a wall of stone, we now have total cover. And can't be targeted by attacks. Okay, cool. And I see Zach's laughing, so this might not be the best idea, but I was excited for it. <laughs> now I'm laughing because fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Damn it. That. <laughs> Um, lucky for you, this Wall of Stone does have a limit to its health. Um, it's six inches thick, and each inch has 30 health, so it has a, uh, 180, I believe. Let me, 30, 60, 90, 
120, 150. Yeah, 180 health. The, now, may I ask, how much room's actually inside of it, just so I know, like... So, it would be... We would have about 20 feet to move around. Like, okay, 10-foot diameter means 20-foot okay. radius. All right, I gotcha. 20, so, and I'm I'm fine with, like, I'm fine in there because I have the spell sniper. So, like, they're never going to be out of my range. All right, so is that in your turn, or are you going to do a spell attack, or was that your turn? That is my turn because I don't have any bonus action spells. All right, so it's Gotham's turn. But I, w- I wish I could have mentioned that before you cast Stone Skin, but I... Gotham looks over like, huh. <laughs> And he runs up to hit the Guardian Naga. Oh, Zach, the, the Wall of Stone... The Wall of Stone's AC is 15, and it has 180 health. So you can break it. Alright. Oh, that rolled off the laptop. That's gonna be definitely enough to hit. That's 18 plus 12. 30? Fuck. That's hitting the Naga. That's crazy, man. Holy shit. That's max damage right there. Eight. So, 1d8 plus 6. Eight. 14. Da- Wait, hold on. 14 damage for the first hit. Okay. And uh, he's going to hit the Naga again. So. That's also going to hit. Eight damage that time. And that ends Gotham's turn. Did you it's make sure to debate. do the first attack with advantage because of the guiding bolt? See if he could. I wouldn't have needed advantage either way. I rolled natural 18 and natural 19. Oh. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the Baylor's turn. Fuck, where's my D20? There it is. Roll yeah, perception. Attack, right? All of us or just? You two. You two? Okay. Um... So, um, Nat 20. Chris? I have an 18. You see the Baylor disappear. Does that mean it forfeit and we won the match? Sorry. And teleports right behind you guys. <laughs> Inside your dome. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> how big Fuck. is it? Fuck you. Wait, how tall is the dome? How tall? It's basically more like huge. Yeah, like, I I don't think I have enough stone to make it a 20 by 20 by 20. Like, it's not 20 feet high, it's just 20 feet around. It's like 10 oh. to 12 feet up. Does it have room to teleport in there? I guess not, unless it, like, kind of, like, whenever it teleports, it, like, kind of destroys <laughs> the dome. It's just... Um... <laughs> are you, are you going to destroy my dome? Are you going <laughs> to... My 180 health 15 armor class dome in one shot? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, I won't. Damn. I was really hoping it was going to be tall enough to where the you guys were going to be stuck inside the dome with the Baylor. That would be funny. Um, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's actually why I was laughing. Uh, I mean, I also, it's a, it's a concentration spell, so either it hits me and I break concentration, or it I just drop concentration, and then the stone collapses on us. Yeah. (laughs) 
So he would have taken damage, I guess, if he had made it in. All right, it's going to hit the stone with its long sword and whip. All right, AC is 15. That's a natural 20 with the sword. <coughs> Fuck me. All right, so that is a... This is a fifth level spell. I can't cast this a bunch of times, so if this thing breaks it in one turn, I'm going to be sad. So that's 32 to start off with. Oh, Jesus Christ. 32, okay, so 148 health remaining. All right, where's the D? Got to keep track of this thing's health now. Plus 61. What? What? Oh, wait, that's, well, 61 altogether, I mean. Okay. Oh, okay. And now we're going to do 3D of fire damage. It's still going? Jesus Christ, my guy. So 73 points altogether. 73? So, so the long sword. 107 health remaining. Now time for the whip. What? No, hold on. Hold oh, on. This wait, thing could one-shot me if that had hit me. What is... What is this? What is this? That was just the sword? Yeah, that was just the sword. Oh, my God. That's a 28 to hit with the whip. Not a crit though, so it should be. This, it should be fine. All right, that's thirteen slashing damage. That on that's on the uh, dome, right? Yeah. Okay. And twelve fire damage. It has 82 health left. And that will end its turn. Now it's Barry's turn. It is? Okay. Um, so at least your guys' dome is safe for one turn. How far it's away from the, the Baylor are we? The Baylor is standing 10 feet away from you guys now. Okay. He well, teleported to where he's 10 feet away. Okay. I don't want to do another concentration spell because that's going to break it. Um. Okay. Um. Let me think here. Okay, I'm a spell attack this motherfucker. Um. I don't think anyone's coming to save you guys today. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't need saving. Just haven't cat. I, I didn't cast a damaging spell because I thought this would be better. Now I know just <laughs> damage spells. Say what? I'm going to. Oh god, I don't know if I want to do that. No, I can't. I, I don't want to do that. Um. What do I have I can use? Okay. This might work. I hope it does. I am going to use for one of my actions. I'm going to use a first level command spell. All right. Against the, against the Baylor. And what's that? 
So basically, I speak a one-word command to a creature I can see within range. Uh, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or follow the command on its next turn. Spell no effect if the target's undead. If it doesn't understand, well, actually, if it doesn't understand your language, it commands directly harmful to it. Does it understand common or elfish? It speaks abyssal and tel- telepathy. Motherfucker. Um, Darthy Naga speaks common. That wouldn't work. Um, I can, can I see the Guardian Naga? You can see, like, half of its body. Okay. Um, Do you need to see its head? I think... If you do, all you gotta do is... Uh, it's something I can... S- the way. It just says, I can see within range. So... Okay. You can see parts of it, so... Okay. I'm going to use command on the Naga. Is it, well, also, is command technically a charm? Um, I don't know. Because it's immune to being charmed. Uh, uh, it doesn't say that something being immune to being charmed would be, wouldn't be affected by it, so I don't think that it Okay. That, well, that accounts. Um, basically, the one word I tell the Naga is flee. Alright, so what do I have to roll? So ma- needs to make a wisdom saving throw. And um, that wisdom saving throw DC is, I believe, 17. Let me make 100% I sure. Fail. You, you fail? Alright. So basically, I have to follow that command and flee. And the guard, yeah, I see the guardian Naga just takes off. But as it takes off, the Baylor swings and cuts its head off. Ooh. Like, try it up! Right, and but now I get to roll D6 because Garin Naga revives in the 1D6 number of days. Ah. One day. One day? Fuck. Okay. <laughs> That's awkward. Okay, and let me use my... Here I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and attack the... The, uh... The Baylor. Uh, with my holy mace. Is a magic well, weapon? You're inside the uh, dome, though. Isn't he inside the dome? No, he never. No, oh. we, Shit, so we never decided that. <laughs> that's that's right. Um, Shit. Okay. I mean, like, hey, you can hit your way out of the dome to him with a melee attack if you I want. I don't really do on that, man. Um, <laughs> the dome protects. <sighs> God. Um, Don't you have a crossbow or something? Yeah, but it's not magical. Don't you have the <laughs> spell called magic weapon? Fuck you, right? Um, okay, oh, I'm gonna fuck. do that. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> bonus, bonus action. Magic See, I'm weapon. better. Uh, I can be a better player than a DM. I swear. God, thanks, Zach. Um, so I'm gonna cast bonus action, cast magic weapon on my. Um, actually, because I have an action. Well. Command is not a, not a concentration spell. Uh, bonus action, magic weapon. And then make my bow magic. And then technically, wait, does that? Oh, God. Um, I'm trying to remember. Okay, I can make an attack of the bonus action after using my attack action. It doesn't say necessarily range from melee. So let me like, make like, two bow, bow attacks. And I get bless. So, magic weapon give me a plus one to damage and a plus one to attack. So technically, I get this plus, um, what is it? Plus eight, plus my d4, plus one. So let's see how I roll. Probably I need it. So I have 17 right now, but I need to roll a d4. Does 20 hit? Yeah. Like a like a dirty twenty. Okay. Nineteens uh, and twenty. Nineteen nineteen and higher hits. Say so he's nineteen. Now I'm gonna do my extra D8 of damage with divine strike. Um, well, actually two D8. So that'd be what would it be? It'd be one D. It'd be three D8 plus three. 
Okay. Fifteen on the first attack. And then on the second attack, I'm gonna roll again. There we go. Uh that's gonna be a dirty twenty again. Technically twenty one with the magic weapon. Alright. And then this one's just a raw one D A plus three. Six. And then that is going to um tell you what. Can I do a bonus action spell? Actually, since I get the bonus action on my other action. I don't believe so. Since like you've oh, already... a good point, yeah. Yeah, I do um, use the bonus action on there. Yeah. Well, cause it, cause I got a, I use the attack action, then I got a bonus action off of that. I only had next, I actually specified what action it was. Didn't I do get two bonus actions? But I'm cool, I'm cool with not taking that. Um, I thought you already used both your bonus actions. No, I use, I only used one. I used the one used two to. Bonus actions? What? Because of haste. No, haste gives you an extra action, but not a bonus. Oh, sure, you're right. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that, that works. And that, I'm done with my turn. All right, well, since the Guardian Naga is headless now, it is a uh, Caden's turn. <clears throat> okay, go for it. Epic. Uh, I'm it for being a coward. What? The Baylor killed it for being a coward. Oh, I thought he was calling me a coward for hiding behind this wall of stone. <laughs> I'm really wrong. surprised the Baylor doesn't have a fireball attack. I'm gonna upcast magic missile at fourth level. So that's three, four. Five, six, seven darts, I think. No, wait. Three. It gets one extra dart for each level buffer. So four, five, six. Yeah, it's six darts. All right, and uh, what kind of damage will be the? Will this be? Force. Oh. Well, damn. Well, is it a, so it's a magical attack, though, right? Yeah. Okay. So he, he will be taking full damage from this. That is 24 force damage. Well, hold on. Do you roll anything in the hit, or do I have to make a save? Magic missile automatically hits. Oh, oh okay. And you said that's 24? Yep. Six little darts just shoot, six little magical darts just shoot out and prick him. <clears throat> All right. And is that it? Um yeah. For now. I'm thinking if haste ever ends on Barry, which it's been what three or f- it, how many turns has it been? Since I hasted you, like, four? Probably, like, four, I think. Yeah, Yeah, so you've got six more turns hasted. Um, I don't know if this combat's going to last that long. five more turns on, uh, for, uh, Bless from Gotham. How many turns from Bless? Five. Five, okay. Okay. All right, well, it's Gotham's turn, and, uh... That won't work. Fuck. All right, he's just gonna uh, shoot his longbow <laughs> at the Baylor because he's not getting anywhere near him. Yeah. Actually, better yet, I'm gonna have the Baylor make a dexterity saving throw, and he fails. 
So he's going to be taking 5d6 lightning damage. Wait, shit, fuck. I forgot he has resistance to that, so that's half of that. So half of 23. So that'd be 12. Wait. Are you, are, you, are you rounding up or rounding down? I forget. I think it's rounding Round up. up. Round up? Okay, so it'd be 12. Okay. And then he's going to shoot the Baylor with an arrow. We'll cast magic weapon and fire in the arrow. Got you. And he misses. It's Baylor's turn. Baylor's world. And he looks irritated. I don't blame him. Wields up his great, his long sword. And. He goes to swing, and it flies right out of his hand. You're on that one? <laughs> yeah. And goes Ooh. right into Gotham. Oh. Oh. Shit. Like, it's like swinging and hits him like... That was a terrible... Got this, Gotham. I believe in you. I'll be your cheerleader from behind my wall of safety. (laughs) God. For 64 points of damage. Wait, against Gotham? Yeah, I roll maximum of everything. Except Jesus. for the last one on fire damage. That Jesus was a two. Right, be Gotham. And I got Revivify, we're fine. <laughs> and you see Gotham drop to his knees. Is he on? Is he still alive? Or is he unconscious? Yeah, he's still alive. Okay. Cool. And with the Baylor kind of satisfied with that, he's going to hit Gothram with his whip. Oh. All right. That's a 19 without the modifier. Okay. Fucking hell. So what? That's what? Like a 31? That would be 19 plus 14. So. Oh, so 33. <laughs> yeah, that's even more of an AC than Tarask. Oh, holy shit. Wow, they have a plus basically guaranteed to hit this dome, I thought. Should have taken a wall of force instead. one thing I want to do, but I really don't want to, because I feel like it will definitely restrict our options. It takes an additional 33 points of damage. And now Gotham's going to make the strength saving throw. And fails, and he gets pulled right up to the Baylor, and the Baylor pulls his sword out of Gotham. Does he add that d4 because the bless? Because it saves? I rolled a natural 3. Yeah, probably saving throw. <laughs> Jesus. And that will end the Baylor's turn. You see Gotham's like, oh. like blood's pouring out of him. Oh my god! No! No! No!
Uh, I think it's my turn now. Zach? Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. Can I like, like, is there like a window for me to like get out of the, the dome? I'm pretty sure it's a solid uh, no Not entry, no escape. Yeah, I left the, a hole big enough for um for spells to go out of, but that's okay. I could drop concentration on it if you need to get out. I think I'm gonna do a ranged attack. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do another guiding bolt, but this isn't just any guiding bolt. I'm gonna fuck up this world. Eighth level. Let's go, bitch. <laughs> Alright, so do I have to make a save and throw? Nope. Okay. So all I have to do is... Um, and what kind of damage is this? Make a range spell attack, uh, radiant damage. And okay. for every slot above or second or higher, damage increases by 1d6. So second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight. So technically it's eleven D six of damage unless I crit. Would that would be twenty two D six. Let's fuck Let's up this ahead. world. And with this, I'm not, not gonna use any, I'm not gonna use any special dice. Also, I have channeled I have like the channel the You're gonna use the magical dice you guys you use against Orcus, aren't you? Yes. I have I have a channel divinity to give me plus ten to a roll, or I can give another person plus ten to a roll. That I kind of forgot about. I forgot about it, but I'm gonna use this metal dice. I'm pretty much guaranteed a hit. <laughs> Let's fuck up this dude's world. <sighs> Come on. Okay. Is it a one? It's not a one. <laughs> it's a two. No. But. It's a natural 20, ain't it? No. Oh, good. But I'm still going to channel divinity. Guided strike. Add that plus 10. Because I didn't roll a 1. I didn't roll a 2. I rolled a 3. <laughs> so, technically, you guided strike. Oh, uh, God, what's... I think... Let me look at the rules on that just to make sure. I'll be sure I can add it to spell attack. Uh, nope, it's not a spell. Okay. <sighs> okay, when they make an attack roll, you can use your channel ability to get a plus ten. So it doesn't it doesn't say necessarily melee, it just says attack. So that You're means... making a base attack. And I'm making a spell attack, yeah. A spell, yeah. yeah. That's a 22. Okay, that hits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you will well, roll the natural one, your dome will have blown up and shattered. Yeah, that would have been bad. Okay. So, kid, ladies and gentlemen, um, give me all of the d6s you have. Like, bring them <laughs> through the Skype. Bring them through the Skype, Skype screen. I need all of them. I need 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There you go. Thanks. Roll me 11 ones. Oh, I'm hopefully not going to do that. 8, 9. I'm just wondering how many d6s I have in here. 10. That's this gonna be a lot of fucking damage. But I bet they yes, it is. won't be standing after this. I mean it's possible. Alright. Alright, clear off the dice tray. Let's make some magic.
All right, remember everyone to say a prayer. <laughs> say a prayer to the dice god. You will fail. Okay. Not terrible. Let's see. Ten. Twenty. Five. Thirty. That's a total of forty damage. Of how much? Forty radiant damage. All right, he's still standing. Okay. Still, next attack roll has advantage against him. So Which this will time, be Caden's turn. Well, no. he still has his second. I'm still, edge. I'm still hasted. Yeah. Oh shit! All right. I'm gonna do guiding bolt again and fire this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Six level, ninety six. Fuck him up. Holy fuck. Roll a d4. Okay, that is going to be... 9 plus 9 plus... 22. Alright. The hit? Yep, 22 to hit. Let me take out two d6s in here. And roll. Okay, I actually got a decent amount of sixes. Okay, eight, ten, twenty, thirty-one, thirty-four. Thirty-four points. Yep, a total of seventy-four damage in those two. Oh shit! And he's still standing. <laughs> Wait, actually no, I actually got advantage on it. So let me actually see what what I've got. Yeah, I need it. I definitely need advantage there because I rolled a one on the second one. So, <laughs> yeah, good, go, go me. I forgot about the advantage. All right, and okay. and the Baylor's still standing. That is my turn. Uh, Caden, fuck him up. I will still triple digits. Try. Holy shit! Triple digits. Uh. Fuck yeah, me, you dude. started off with 262. Okay, well, I have something that might be able to help us. What Not this turn, but, well, I have Disintegrate. <laughs> oh, I love Disintegrate. I don't want to cast it until I know that he's out of the tree. Because I'm pretty sure. Where are you? Just... Does that mean what? Like a oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I guess it's. I might as well cast it now. Because yeah. I thought it was the one that. No, that's Power Word Kill that just. Straight up. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'll do that. So, Zach, the Baylor needs to make a dexterity saving throw. All right. And is this a spell effect? Yeah, it's a spell effect. Yeah, it is. Alright, so he has advantage on saving throws against spell and magical effects. Yeah, I forgot about that. It's fine. Seventeen. That fails! Yes! Alright. <laughs> no, uh, hey, at least I'm an honest DM. Yeah, that was so close. Alright, so it's taking... 10d6 plus 40 damage. Oh, fuck. I swallowed a little bit. Oh my now, what god. What was that? It's taking Sorry, 10d6 plus 40. Sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? 10d6 plus 40 damage against the Baylor. 
Holy fuck. Well, damn. Oh, my lord. You can get him down below 100 here. Jesus Christ. I... How you rolling, boss? Uh... It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. Okay. That's a total of... 87. <laughs> the Baylor now looks hurt. 87. <laughs> Cool as round. Like we've done 160, 161 damage against that Baylor. <laughs> we have, we've definitely got it down below 100. Yeah, it it's. Uh, you said 262. Yeah, that's that's what it started off with, like at the very be- like be- at last episode. Yeah, I wanted to save. That uh, but it's still slot, standing. But, but it I does guess look we need we need that damage. So it's now Gotham's turn. Yeah, Gotham is gonna wait. Gotham got pulled up to it. So yeah, but it's at the beginning of the Baylor's turn that he takes the damage. No, it's... Not. But does that mean Gotham was technically supposed to take that damage too? No, disintegrate is a single target spell. Okay. Yeah. And this was force damage, so it doesn't resist it. All right, uh, well. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know many. Gotham's gonna m- try moving, but which invokes an attack of opportunity and misses. So Gotham gets a flee. And he moves 25 feet away and then fires his bow. Alright, that hits with the bow. Okay. And that is a 1d8 plus. For six points of damage. Okay. And that will end his turn. It's Baylor's turn. And he's going to try hitting your stone thing again with his sword. That's fine by me. That is a natural 19. Okay. I'm pretty Almost sure unless great. he rolls unless he rolls a one, he hits it. Because of his plus fourteen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think even if even if he rolls a one, well no, one's not on the hang list, that's right again. Well no, if if it still hits, it hits, but there's still some kind of punishment for it though. Yeah, good point. Like during Chris's one one shot where you hit that uh fucking uh the uh, dryer or whatever. Half human, half spider fucking thing. With all your modifiers, one. you're still able to hit, but you still roll a one. Yeah, so you still the, hit, uh, the guy but you lost your Warhammer at the moment. Yeah. All right. I need this seventh level spell. Holy shit. Fuck teleport. I'm gonna take this next. Excuse me. <sighs> 52 points of damage to the stone thing. That 55. It is. Yeah. What? It's 52 total so far? Yeah. 
So it's 55. Awesome. It's still standing. How much hit points does it have? It it should have 30 unless I counted wrong. It, I know last I checked with 107, but I think you might be right actually with that 30. All right, well, he's kind of hit with the whip now. Yeah, 107 was what it was left at before the whip attack. Then the oh, whip right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's a natural 20. Okay, I don't think you have to roll that, that wall's going down. <laughs> Can I? So that's twenty points for slashing. Okay. Ah, it has ten health. Let's go. That's eighteen points for fire damage alone. So yeah, I don't even have to roll. Yeah. Do so the stone will crumble around this. And does anybody speak abyssal? No. Uh. And what is telepathy like? Can you hear it in your mind? Yeah, it can, it doesn't have to open its mouth to speak. It just talks to us with, it's in our head. But like, can you guys understand what it's saying or no? If the stat block doesn't say that it speaks common, ah, oh, it doesn't speak common. It would be though. speaking ab- it would be speaking abyssal in our head, which oh, well, you're hearing it's, something it would in be terrifying because abyssal is like. <laughs> screams of agony and shit. You're <laughs> and hearing abyssal in your guys. guy's head now. <laughs> I feel like it, it's Call of Cthulhu level. <laughs> Maddening speech. Oh my god. And it ends its turn. My turn now, maybe. It's worth putting up a new wall of stone, so I'll just we'll just damage it. I think. Have another turn like last turn, yeah, we'll be able to win. Okay. I'm gonna go. Up. Is it is it my turn? I think. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna attack it with the holy mace. It's already made right. it. So it's what, like, plus nine, I think you said it was? Yeah. Okay. And since you're doing a melee attack, if, well, hold on. Uh, All right, if you hit it, you take 3d6 fire damage. Worth it. Um. Uh, that's awkward. You rolled a one, didn't you? No, I did not. I rolled three. <laughs> but I am going to, because technically that would be a plus nine. I don't even think if I rolled like a four, you got a sixteen, I would get it. So I'm just going to roll again. Um, use my second bonus attack of the day. Uh, that might hit. 21. That hits. Okay. So now you'd be taking 3d6 fire damage. It's like, what, 3d8 plus 3d6? So 17 points of fire damage. Okay. That works. Damn, that was almost max damage. Two sixes and a five. It is going to be 3d8 plus 2d6. Fuck, is it plus three? I want to say. I'm trying to remember where I had the. Um, the. Um, I think it's in here. Yeah, 3d8 plus 3d6 plus 3. I'm going to do a divine strike to add 2d8.
Okay, so it's going to be. That is 10 plus two more. That's 25. And it drops to its knees. Hold on. It's 11. And that's going to be 36, 39. It's dead. Nice. nice. Everybody make me a DC uh, 20 dexterity saving throw. Okay. Very oh, easy with disadvantage. Disadvantage? Right there. Because okay. of nope. death throwers. It's because of haste, he has advantage, so they cancel each other out. So you roll straight then. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. Don't worry, neither am I. <laughs> So they roll the 13. Six fire damage. Plus one. So I technically would have rolled a 14. Damn, so same. Well, I got to roll for Gotham, and everybody who fails takes 20 D6 fire damage. 20 D6. Oh. Jesus. Oh. We are fucked. Oh. This is insane. Oh, for a solid 58 points of damage. Wait, wait. Uh, give me one second. I might be able to do something here. Wait, you rolled 20 d6 and you got 58? I rolled with a dice app. A lot of ones. Alright, 58. The max damage would be 70. 20 d6, the maximum damage would be 120. Oh, wait. Let me see this again. <laughs> Let me roll that again. <clears throat> Do I have enough time to ca cast an action spell before this happens, or no? Uh, I don't think so. When the Baylor dies, it explodes. So it pretty much literally explodes. It's immediate, you know? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Damn. Yeah. 20. Um, so yeah, 58 points of damage for everybody. Mm -hmm. So Gothram had 33 points, so. Gotham going to make death saves? He succeeds the first one. Okay. That's easy. I lived. He fails the second. Okay. Can we stabilize him? Can fails the third. <laughs> hey, uh, can I run over to try and stabilize him? Yeah, let's do it. Let's run over and try and stabilize him. It's yeah, high, good or bad. Well, hold on. Uh, you're You're doing a lot of rolls really quickly. Barry, don't you have any healing spells? I have a vivifying... I have okay, he two. has two failures and one successful right now, all right? Healing word. Boom. Well, I says high gear, bad. Uh, good. All right, that's not 20, so you guys do have the time to do this. Okay, I can't see word. How much damage did you guys all take? Are you guys okay? 58. I have... I'm at 30, 38 right now. I'm and good. Chris? 16. Uh, I should have cast Fire Shield way sooner in that fight, but... And you see all the lizard folk also just began to drop their weapons as agreed to surrender in the city. Bloody hell, I feel like bloody hell. <clears throat> And also, the Baylor's weapons also explode. He gets uh, four back, four, four health points back. All right, but he was at thirty-three, and he was a uh, took fifty-eight. Yeah, so he's not past his negative maximum. Yeah. You don't get, yeah. I mean, you don't get negative hit points. So okay. he only gets four back. He uh, he pops up with four. Yeah, I know. I've been confused about that too. In the past. And he kind of just. <gasps> Takes a, like a breath and. <sighs> Bathroom, you're alive. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you with the, the stone combat everywhere. And it's just a whole mess. Don't worry, and then he just passes out. We're safe here. We won. 
the good day. That would be fucking hilarious if the other Chris just popped in now. <laughs> All right, you guys get 22,000 XP from the Baylor. 22,000? Jesus. Okay, and I think that's... 2,900 from the snake guy from last week. You said, you said 22,000 and yeah. 2,900? Yeah. Uh, what am I at now? Oh. Three forty seven. Guardian Naga, you guys don't get shit because the Baylor killed it. Ah, uh, that. <laughs> you still uh, fun. Now roll me a perception check, everyone. I. When you get a moment. I think I'm level twenty now. Holy shit! Wait, I made a level fifteen character, and you're telling me that Barry over here is level twenty. Yeah. He's the only one that's that high. I am high as hell. Because he's the only one that's consens- that shows up on a base on consens- consistently. Yeah. Oh. Um I yeah, I leveled up though. I think. Twenty three. Yeah, I leveled up. Uh production check is twenty three. Alright. Let me... There's my d20. Oof. Uh... Nine. Well... Chris, you hear just a weird, weird like... Like, grumbling, grumbling sound. Max, you see the ground underneath the baler beginning to, like... Shake and kind of fall apart and everything. Oh, boy. Like, sink in. As a purple worm comes in and drags the Baylor down underground. Wait. What? Like what's left of it. There's still stuff left after the explosion? Pretty much what's left. Like maybe some bones. Okay. Oh, Jesus. We gotta fight a purple worm now. No. Okay, thank God. And now the rest of your allied army has arrived. Except for Jarrell for some reason and the Baj. Well I think we need to I think we need to create a battalion. Unfortunately, uh Jarrell heard of rebellion up at the north and he had to go deal with that. It makes sense. The Baj is staying at Antia, making sure nobody else gets slot. Nobody else starts slaughtering citizens again. Yeah, yeah traceable. Good on him. Yeah, I appreciate not getting slaughtered. Although I guess I'm not a civilian anymore, huh? And this is also Gary. You guys are talking to Gary. Uh, Chris, Gary is, would be labeled as probably the second most powerful man in the on the co- continent. Right after right. me, Chris. Like, as in, like, not, like, power-wise, more or less, like, authority. Yeah. Oh, whoops. <laughs> right after He's- me, of course. Yeah. He is a Yarl. Okay. Well, you already knew that, Max. Yeah, that's right. Chris did not. What's they a Yarl? Have a respect for authority. What was that, Max? What's a Yarl? Chieftains, pretty much. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Have you played Skyrim? No. Damn. <laughs> Wait, you play Dungeons and Dragons, but yet you have never played Skyrim. D&D is free. Sue me. Well. well okay, he's, <laughs> he's, he's got us there. <laughs> well, we have uh, come up with a plan to take the city of Lumbar. Okay. 
the city sits on a lake, so we're going to attack from two sides. We're going to drag boats, and we're going to do a, an attack on the lake walls, and then after lake walls, we're going to assault the main wall, the land walls as well. But the lake invasion Lumbar, happened first. Lumbar is the uh, lizard folk city, isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. It's just city after city after city. I was like, wait, it's just, a break? it's just been taken over by lizard folk, so we just need to get basically just rid them out of there, exterminate them. But we will need an illusion mist up on the land wall up on the land side to, can you cast some kind of illusion to pretty much hide us as he looks at you Caden can you cast an illusion to hide us of course I can <laughs> <laughs> good how how big of a how much big of an area can you cast mm, let me think I could pretty much get an entire ship's crew invisible so they think an abandoned ship is floating over, or... No, we're going to need you on the land wall. The land wall. Oh, well, I have... Mm. <clears throat> Let me think. Could you possibly hide about a thousand people? <sighs> You're... A... You're asking a lot, but yeah, I probably, if you give me some time, I probably could. All right, and we can give you a little help with a, with a couple of trainees we have tr learning magic, illusion magic, too. They're not the best. That's why we asked you. All right, I guess I've got some work cut out for me. Let me think about what spells to bring. I am going to need time to change my prepared list. And he looks at you, Barry. And Barry, some of the men see you as commander, and they're going to need you on the naval front. Okay. No worries with that. So you'll be attacking by lake, as will be as us and Caden will be attacking by land. Two prong strategy. That doesn't seem too difficult. It sounds. But nice. the land attack will not begin until their full forces are hitting, like they pull the forces away from the walls. They hit the defend the lake wall because that's what the illusions get kick in to hide us, so they won't even see us. Hey, Max, mm. you're muted. Oh, he probably knows he's muted. All right, what do you think of this plan, wizard? Yeah, so I'm gonna need. Can your can your trainees cast major image? If you teach them, they could. Hey, I'm actually <laughs> muted. <laughs> I know. They can be. They can learn pretty quick too. Okay. Well, then this should be easy. Is um, good or bad, Chris? Uh, good. That is a natural 19, so boom. They're not idiots. <laughs> <laughs> nice! The low of people uh, aren't idiots. I can make it look like... or what? So it's a lake city. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to think that fog has rolled over. Um, each and every one of us can cast Major Image to cover the entire army in fog, so they just think it's a foggy day, and then boom, a whole army's on top of them. Well, I'm saying, like, we want them to see the naval invasion so the land one's hidden. Okay, well, yeah. It, I can still make it. Will it be, yeah, will it be tall enough to cover a couple, two siege towers? Two siege towers. Um, You'd probably have to have an illusionist on top of the siege. How tall are these siege towers? 50 feet high. Yeah, you would need one standing at the base and one sta uh, up on the top, if possible. Oh, damn, we only have three of us. Three of us? Okay. 
Uh, all right, we'll use ladders instead. Uh, give me, give me one second. I still have an idea. And you guys want to take a break real quick? Sure. Yeah, we can. While I figure I'll out go, what the like, go bathroom, do whatever you guys need to do. Yeah, no problem. Tasked with covering a thousand soldiers. A, All right, we uh, will be uh, back. Should have done the spell evil and good during that battle arc, right? Oh. And we're back. Yo. Up. Uh, All right. We'll just say like after you guys have defeated the Baylor and the lizard folk have surrendered, some of them escaped, some of them became prisoners. Okay. But no massacre. No massacre. Cool. And now you guys have forged some. Is, or like foraging for food and supplies. Okay. Is there anything you would like to look for while like doing like a great loot of the city? Oh, if there are any spell scrolls, I would love to see that. Would you like to go to like a temple or a possible If library? there's any any court wizard, <laughs> uh then I would go there, or a li- like you said, a library. Temple would more likely have cleric Roll spells. A, uh... Hold on, let me check something. <laughs> Who would uh, have... Somebody roll me insight check. Okay. Actually, yeah. I'll go ahead and pull my character here. Uh, my insight is a. Where is it? By Chris, roll with advantage. Yeah. It's a plus three. So I don't know how good your insight is. I only have a plus one. Go for it. A roll with advantage for Chris. Okay. So. Oh. That is an 18. You, since you've been, like, kind of familiar with the areas and all that, you do know of, a, like, a back alley that sells scrolls. Hey, but since, like, with you, over th- with you guys taking over, the place has probably been, like, those guys have been kicked down. Most of the people are probably, like, not interested in the scrolls. Oh, shit. Oh, I'll loot the fuck out of that. <clears throat> All right, you going? Are you, is that where you're going to go? Yeah. Immediately. What about you, Chris? What? Oh, I meant uh, Max, Max. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> you're good. Um, I would like to go to look at some religious temples, see if I can find. Um, also, I'm looking for potions as well. There seemed to be a potion shop that managed to board up its doors before you guys busted in. Okay. So what do you do? Are you going to try kicking in the door? Uh, how big of a potion shop is it? About the size of like an average house building. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say too big, but not too small. I don't think I am going to. But, well, man, if I could, sure, why not? Let's do it. Roll me a strength check. Um, nine. Have you ever watched Jurassic Park 3? No. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> I'm sorry for disappointing you. <laughs> Do you live under a rock? Um, Wait, you live in Ohio. That's right. Yeah, I live in Ohio. I always live under a rock, my bro. You go to kick it, and like as soon as you make impact with it, your like, leg cramps up. Ah! 
Are you going to try again with the other leg? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not not my thing. You have your mace or hammer. Yeah, I can do that. All right. I'm going to mace it. Mace this motherfucker. <laughs> yep, I got a two. So technically, I got a five. Why? You uh, somehow managed to like completely miss and you hit the ground, like with the mace. Like it just bounces back and it's like. <laughs> If you roll the one, baby. <laughs> you give up or you got to keep on trying? I'm going to try one more time with the mace. Well, meanwhile, <laughs> as uh, now we're going, Caden's <laughs> going to the secret shop. Are you kidding me? So hold off on your roll, Max. Don't roll yet, all right? <laughs> okay. Okay. I just rolled, so I'll roll again when it comes to it. All right, you get to uh, the secret shop. Secret right. shop. And just just imagine, like, as soon as you open the doors, it's like your eye, eyes widen. Imagine a dwarf finding a foul, like a million pieces of gold just out of nowhere. Dude, there's not that many spells. Do not. <laughs> is there that? <laughs> no, spell? I'm just saying, imagine that. Like, that's how you're feeling right now. <clears throat> okay. But, like, why? What's in there? Are you... It's about, you probably found about uh, a room loaded with about uh, 2,000 scrolls. Holy fuck, dude. You. You do know that if any of these spells aren't already in my spell book, I can use money to put them in there, right? <laughs> so are you pay me? I have to I have to spend money for it where you spend you spend money and time practicing spells and shit to add them to your spell book. It was like an EA micro uh, micro transaction. Yeah, it's like it's like. It, but it's also, like, uh, roll me a perception check. Yep. Uh. Ooh. ooh, ooh, ooh. What did What did you do? That's that's a daddy one. That's a. <sighs> Fuck. Oh damn. Reroll it. <laughs> okay. Roll the advantage. I want this to happen. Okay. That's a 20. Not natural, but 20. You notice that uh, <clears throat> there's a mantle with a, a sh more or less like a massive book on it instead of a scroll. Huh. Um... It doesn't have like any like titles or anything written on it. No text on it or anything. No, it's and it looks like the the cover is made out of like a a very old like you say leather mahogany wood. Okay, I was like, don't tell me I found a fucking Necronomicon or something. <clears throat> All right, uh, well that looks like obvious bait. So I'm first going to grab as many scrolls as I can. Um, and you see the shelves are like labeled too on like kind of like what they do. Okay, so what kind of spells do I, are like, are these mass produced spells then? So yeah, there's, there's not like, actually, there's not so actually like, a large variety. It's just that there's a lot of them. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So what kind There's of spells? Just at first glance, your character thinks you hit the mother load. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so what, what, what kind of spells are we looking at? Because I've already got There's a hit. A typical fireball. I already know that, but I could sell those, so. Thunder wave. Uh, I will take... I will take that. Um, 
Let me add that to my inventory. So I'm going to take a scroll of thunder wave. There is a scroll of shatter. I will take that as well. There okay. is a scroll of protection from good and evil. Might as well. And then there's a cast familiar. Did you hear that one? Yeah, scroll of cast familiar. Is that it? These yeah. are all pretty low-level spells. <laughs> all right. Well, no, they're like maximum, well, uh, maximum level Thunder Wave. Or is there oh, only one level Thunder a, Wave? Oh, that's a max level Thunder Wave in there? These are well, max level spells. Shit, like a, you should have like said Like at your that. maximum level, I mean, though. Yeah, I, I'm going, so that's 8th level. Um. But that's still an eighth level thunder wave, my guy. I'm going to take as many of those scrolls as you will let me uh, of thunder wave and shatter. I don't need more than one of the others because. Well, you probably only need just one scroll. Well, right, but that scroll lets me cast that spell without using a spell slot. Right, I know. So I'm going to take more than one because even if I have. You can. You can probably hold up to, uh, in your, do you have a backpack? Yeah. You could probably take, uh, two of each scroll. These are some thick-ass scrolls that, all right, well then, instead of, well, about... that's also if you're interested in the book. Oh, okay, okay, well, I'm not taking the, the, two of the cast familiar or two of the scroll of protection from good or evil so that i'm going to take three of thunder wave and three of shatter all right and i will oh, not 31 three there we go um <clears throat> then i will go up to the book and i'm going to look for traps connected to it all right uh could I roll like? I'm not sure. What would you roll for that? Uh, well, um, I guess probably investig investigation. I would imagine. Yeah, investigation. All right. I'm also going to actually, yeah, no, just that. Um, for now. If it's a magical trap, I'll just counterspell it when it goes off. Uh, 15, investigation. It doesn't seem trapped to you. All right. Um, I'm going to mage hand, uh, cast mage hand, and from a distance, I'm going to pick up the book with, a mage, with mage hand. All right, and you pick up the book. Okay. Um, Nothing um, happens. I'm going to have the mage hand bring it closer, and I'm going to check. Can I do an arcana check to see if this book is cursed in any way, shape, or form before I grab it? It is not cursed. Well, now I feel silly. So I can't make, was a, come on, make, it, make it a trap book. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll just take the book then. Um, can I open it? What's in the book? Wait. The book looks like it's written in a, uh, what languages can he speak? I can speak common, draconic, and, uh, elvish. Okay, well, you wouldn't be able to understand any of this language. Yeah, most... But you do see yeah. pictures... There are pictures. Okay. Can I at least tell what script it is? What language? It's written in Celestial. 
Select. <laughs> um, uh, do do I get awesome? Um, I cast comprehend languages. All right. Now, can I read it? Yes. All right. So, what 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 is it? What? It's a book that tells about the events that will happen in a year. In a. Hold on. Does can I make an Arcana check to see if this is a magical book? It's not a magical book. It's just a oh, book, okay. and it just happens to be the events taking place in, like, said one year, but it was written about a couple thousand years ago. But it's going, it's talking about the events that are taking place in the coming year? Yes. Oh, well, it's why like would I... Probably be a, okay. It's like 2012, my calendar kind of stuff. I'm guessing. Hmm. Well, or despite just, being a wizard, I don't trust any whack job who just writes the future in a book. I'll still take it, but... It, it's it's like if you're reading the Bible, and the year you're on right now is a year before Revelation. Oh, I mean, okay. And still, uh, Caden won't trust it immediately, but what is, what, what's, it gonna say, what, what's it saying is going to happen in a year for amusement purposes? First three months of three consecutive well altogether six months of straight winter all over the land, including in Sangrea in the desert. Interesting. Followed by a blood moon. Um followed is- by what it just labels as the great Beast of Beneath emerging than the apocalypse. Oh, so the world's ending in a year. Well. Barry was informed of this a couple years ago by Zachy Chan's mom. Yeah. And we know about Tiamat coming. But that's also happening in the current year you guys are in. This world does not. <laughs> I think it's time for it to end. It's <laughs> if all these peace. events are happening. Rest in peace, this world, man. Hey, bro. Just I need one more level up, and then we can plane shift somewhere else. Go do do all like right. a, ro- a rocky training montage in the Feywild. <laughs> well, at least you've watched Rocky. I've never seen Rocky. What? <laughs> Look, I have a postcard from Philadelphia of the Rocky statue at the at that Philadelphia museum. I've never I've seen like five minutes of Rocky, and that's about it. Do I'm sorry, I'm uncultured. Or something. I have Netflix <laughs> and like Hulu and stuff. Uh, okay. Like I I watch Parks and Rec and like Cobra Kai in my time. I do not. I don't watch like Rocky and stuff like that. So Caden's gonna take the book. Is All right, are you going to run back to Barry now? I'm not going to run back to Barry, like, crying for my mommy, no. I'm just going to well, casually run back. <laughs> but as you head back to Barry, you're just hearing, like, a thud. Uh, what direction? Bear? As you see Barry, he's just smacking the door with a mace. <laughs> I'm giving up, honestly. Just give me one more roll. Okay. It's funny because literally when I rolled it, like immediately when you told me not to roll, it was a nat twenty. So, ah, uh, fuck. Um, let's see what I get here. Nine. It's a total of nine. Yeah, I, I'm basically, I'm giving up. Fuck this shit. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I see another soldier walks up. He's like. If you want in, I'll show you how it's done. I don't want to see him fail miserably. I rolled a three. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, okay. Let's try and strike it both at the same time. 
Okay, teamwork. One, two, three. <coughs> Natural 20. 15. And the door just busts in, and you see there's a, a dwarf there, and he's right there with a crossbow, and he fires. Um... Your guys are breaking into his shop, so... You see... <laughs> You see Caden kind of dissipate the fireball he was about to do. Like, oh, I guess I'm, I, I'm not needed. Um, There's a 24 hit Barry. Yes. God damn. Isn't this just Seven a normal points of damage from the crossbow. How much damage? Seven. Uh, technically three. Four. Wait, from what? From my avatar of battle at 17th level. Oop. <laughs> so I get resistance to non-magical damage. This is just as bad as fucking Kirk's character. I don't, that's what clerics are. You take up Wizards of the Coast, man. <laughs> oh, oh my god, there's someone in here. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have, he's we have loading to... up his crossbow again. I'm sorry. I fucking book it. Get I, up! I, I thought you were banned, I'm sorry. Shop. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my god's gonna kill me. Wait, are you apologizing to the guy? I apologize to the guy, yes. I had the door blockade for a fucking reason. Yeah, but the battle's over, good sir. Yeah, they keep you guys out. Oh. Yeah. Are we the baddies? <laughs> I don't know. I heard what you guys did in Antia. <sighs> We're trying to stop the lizard folk. And That's then you guys hear a click. Uh, I'll stand in front of the door. The, and he pops the back over with his crossbow loaded again. Hey, hey, bro. You can... We're not gonna hurt you. If nope, you we don't mean you no harm. We know Tiamat is coming. We know the lizard nope. folk are trying to kill everyone. Tiamat, uh... I, would Barry know what Tiamat is? Yeah, you were told about them. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like a five-headed dragon god that will, like, try and screw everything up. It's not good. Somehow managed to get a brass dragon on our side. Yeah, he brass turns around and just there. shoots himself. Hey, just what? in fear. No, no. A healing word. Oh, what's that do? Uh, 1d4 plus 1. Uh, healing. <laughs> Let me roll it. Five. Why did you bring me back to life? Um, because we need all the help we can get. I'm a shopkeeper. Yeah. yeah, but you still provide valuable skills. Like, you know, there are chefs for the army, right? They don't have combat experience, but they cook. They feed the soldiers. They have medics. You've got potions. <clears throat> huh. So, tell you what, I am. Bit, I've been you thinking. You now hear. Ah, ah, ah. Fuck. And here's somebody yell, duck. And a bird comes flying right to you. What? What? A bird with a little message attached to it, its leg. Um. Go ahead. I'll let Caden grab it. Oh, okay. It's labeled to Barry. Okay, then I'll grab. I'll let me grab it. <laughs> give, give it. What's it say? It says, "Dear Barry, from your friend, Argos." Argos, my boy. Whenever you're done doing whatever it is you're doing in the South, I need you to do me a favor. And. Sail to a con different country to represent me. Apparently, my brother-in-law is over there causing a issue. Okay. And it does have the royal seal on it. Did you say which country? The country is known as Wayless. 
Way less, man. I know I've been trying to lose weight. <laughs> <clears throat> his brother-in-law is Philip, is that right? Yes. I forgot what exactly Philip did. I think he's he's a um, is he related to Zaki Chan? No, he was related. He was the son of the Elven King, but he was exiled for uh, committing high treason. That's true. Exiled yeah, until his father's death, which his father died last yeah. season. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Oh, Seymour, yeah. No. Oh. Aldir was the Elven King. Aldir, yep. Yeah. That's right, I forgot about that. Seymour was the guy who beheaded Chris's character. Yep. With his own sword. And then we kicked his ass. It's been a while. <laughs> Only because you guys had the help of a god. But you guys are broken into the potion shop. You see healing potions, and that's pretty much about it. Tell you what, I had to say it's the shopkeeper. Just take whatever you want. Just don't break anything. Um, I want to see if my god thinks this is okay. Oh, what? I want to see if my god thinks this is okay. Is high gear bad? Um, I was going to roll a religion check. Oh, okay. And I have some extra religion due to my um, mace. That's a mod 20. No, no, no. I'm I'm sorry, but if I'm going to take any of this, I'm giving you payment. You need it. You need it to defend yourself. Well, make sure all of them have to pay, too. I can do that. Uh, Do you only accept payment in gold, or do you have payment? Do you accept payment in weapons? Gold, silver, copper. Silver, copper, okay. Gold, weed. How much gold do we have on us? I completely forget. I've just been involved in combat. I don't have any on me. Okay. Chris, you have about 800 pieces of gold on you. Do you remember, oh, how, much, do you remember how much Barry has? Barry has never actually said anything about gold because most of his shit he got for free. Sure. So Barry can have about also, 800 gold pieces. Yeah, because okay. <laughs> I've not been keeping track of gold. Um, okay. Okay, um, how much for your potions? How much for your wares? How many you want? Let's do, like, You want the whole three. shop? I don't want the whole shop. Damn, I was looking forward to an early retirement. Okay. There you are. Do you take? I want to help you out a little bit. I want to bless yeah. your shop. I would. I would like to bless your shop. So that way, if anyone decides to come attack it in the future, I'll give you all the potions okay. for sixteen hundred gold. Sixteen hundred? I don't even have sixteen hundred. <laughs> That's all of our gold combined. I'm sorry. That'd be much more we need. Um, tell you what. Um, if we take five potions, how much is that going to run us? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> ten gold. Five potions? Okay, what kind of healing potions are these? Are these like... 1d10 uh, plus three. 1d10 plus three? What do you think, Chris? How much? How many do you want? I don't even know. Are these just potions of healing? What else? So yeah. It's bas- yeah, it's basically potion of healing. It's a 1d10 plus 3 healing. I... 
I think I'm good. And let um, uh, yeah, I'll take one, one or two. If all right, so that'll be four pieces of gold. Four or two. Pieces of gold. Or two. God, I'm glad you don't know how the economy works in D and D. You did. All right, so you get. So I'll give you ten gold pieces for the five potions. I have oh, my own economy. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you. The economy can be what it wants. I think I have some extra healing potions. Actually, now I think about it. Um, so technically, I have seven of them now because I remember get I remember having two of them previously. I have it written down on my character sheet. All right, and uh, <clears throat> you hear someone yell. Hey, we need a cleric up here. I'm going, I'm coming. Run. Bolt. And you bolt towards at, and you see it's kind of like a... It looks like it's a... Almost like a jail cell, but with a holy lock on it. Okay. And behind it is a... It appears to be a treasure chest. Apparently, only holy damage can destroy this lock. Uh, can I do a knowledge arcana on the treasure chest? Sure. Okay. It, you know, it's a basic ass chest. They just put that lock on there for a situation like this for it to ever occur. No one would be able to get the money. 18. Or whatever's in it. But 18 to what? Arcana. You Just know it's eight. a regular chest. Regular chest? Okay. Um, damn it, where's the high roll? Um, what if it would be holy damage? Would it be like radiant? Anything that's holy related. Um, I'm going to smack it with the holy mace. Alright, oh, roll it. Wait, okay, who's the person who was yelling out that I need a cleric? Uh, just a regular soldier. Can I actually roll insight on him? See that whether he's trying to lead me into a trap. He just wants the gold inside. So okay, he's going after the money. I'm gonna share. Sure, sure. All right, I'm just gonna go after it. That one was on the side. Okay. Does a 13 hit it? Yes. Okay. Two, four, nine, 14, 16, 20, and a lock 25 break. damage. The lock breaks. <laughs> and you open the chest, and you see there is gold and silver in there, but you also see there's like a wand in there as well. Okay. What kind of wand is it? Roman Arcana check. Okay. Eight. You know absolutely nothing. I bring it over to... You um, think it's a toothpick. I bring it over to um, Caden. See what he thinks. Hey, Caden. Chris? Check it out. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. Um, he found a wand inside the chest. Oh, um, do I have the identify spell? And even if I do, do I have it ready? I do not. All right, well, then I guess I should just roll Arcana, huh? Yeah. 
Uh, okay, there we go. 26. Nice. You know, it's a wand. It's a wand of fire. A fire? A wand of fire. Okay. That's not a spell, but... No, like, the wand does fire attacks. Okay. Well, so, can it... Hold on. Can, can you explain to me what that is, or... Want the fire, want, want the fire. Oh, want the fireballs. Oh, that makes more sense. So, does it have, I'm guessing it has a limited number of uses per day of fireball? This one has seven charges. Seven, holy. While holding it. You can use an action to extend one or more of its charges to cast a fireball spell. Save DC 15. Right. For charges, you cast a third level version of the spell. You can increase the slot. Well, I can already cast fireball, so if that's all you, Barry. Okay. And I just pocket it. Well, no, this will allow you to cast fireballs and also use the wand without taking your spell slots. That's right. True. But you just said that the DC for that fireball is 15. But if I cast a fireball myself, the DC is 18. Oh. So it's harder for them to succeed. Well, I was trying to find a cool weapon for you, man. <sighs> I've got my staff. Is is. Or my wand, my, my little wand. He's, he does his job. You also so many you see, uh, it appears to look like a quarter staff is also in the same room as the chest. <laughs> is that a magical quarter staff or it's a regular quarter staff? Roll me a uh, uh, detect whatever detect magic. Who? You know nothing. Uh, Arcana check time. <laughs> 14. You can tell that it is labeled as a magical weapon. Magical and you weapon. also notice that it looks like there's like a little, almost like a push button on the staff. Button. I'm gonna push the button. Oh lord! And like a spearhead shoots out the top of the quarter staff. Oh shit! Okay, interesting. So it's a quarter staff that can turn into a spear. That uh, wow! It can return if thrown. Oh yo! It's a fucking spear. Uh, of returning? Oh, hey, it's a uh, it's a um, mule spear. <laughs> mule spear. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm, I'm not prof- Here you go, Barry. Barry, Chris. <laughs> I'm not proficient <laughs> with spears. Use it as a quarter staff. I can't, okay, but take I can't it. throw the quarter staff. I'll take it, but dude, I have like five weapons. This is all yours. Okay. I have a short metal, a dark metal short Let's sword. Pick up with, with cool weapons, damn it. A silver war hammer, a holy mace. Now a wand of fireball and a longbow that I can make magical at my will. Is this <laughs> a fire? Uh, attunement. <laughs> Zach. Sorry, guys. I had to plug in my fan. I was getting hot in here. Dude, dude Barry, Barry collecting po- He's collecting weapons like Ash collects Pokemon. Ash is very bad at collecting Pokemon, though. Yeah. Motherfucker only catches like six Pokemon in each region. 
Fair point, fair point. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, but at least you've watched Pokemon. I grew up on that shit. So, Zach, does this does this stat, does this quarter staff require attunement in order to use it? Require a what? Attunement. <laughs> you probably know how to use a spear or quarter staff. I am proficient in quarter staff. I'm not proficient in in, in spears. However, if this requires attunement, then it takes up one of my attunement slots, and I become proficient in the weapon because I'm attuned to it. Would you want to be proficient with it? Uh, I'm never going to use it if I'm not. <laughs> to be then honest. sure, you can become proficient if you want. <sighs> okay. Without taking that attunement thing. Uh, just but... imagine it being like just using the quarter staff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How much damage does it do? It will do uh, with the spearhead. It will do two uh, d ten damage. Okay. Let me spearhead death does two d ten plus. Uh, What's your? You don't have any strength modifiers, do you? No, I have a minus one, and I have a plus one to dex. Then <laughs> plus one for your dex modifier, then. Cool. And then without the spearhead, it'll be uh, two d six plus one. D six plus one. Um, and this does count as magical with that, uh, for the purpose of yeah. co- recovering resistance, right? Yeah. Cool. All right, right so now you've heard that some people are saying that it's time to, to, it's time for Operation Overload against Lumbar. Let's do it. Fun, fun, fun. All right, it takes you guys about, uh, let's say a couple days to get to the city, all right? Okay. All right, you guys are starting to split up. Barry, you're heading down with the main force down to the, to the lake. Okay. All right. Roll me a perception check. Eleven. Roll with advantage. It's a pretty big lake. Good. That was on its side. Twenty-one. Let's just say this lake's probably about as big as Lake Erie. Okay, I've been to Lake Erie, so I know what you're talking about. So it's a big lake, all right? <laughs> eat, eat a big boy. And you guys see, and you see boats that like. There's just small boats able to transport maybe about 30 guys on a boat. And at the front of the boats, they have these flop gates that flop down. So, like, if there's horsemen, the horses can charge directly onto the beach, all right? Okay. All right, and you see there's there's some Goliaths there that Jarrell has left behind. They're getting prepared with their 8-foot-tall kite shields and 15-foot... Uh, uh, spear, or what they use as 15 foot long spears. Man, if only I could properly use a shield. What? I said if only I could properly use a shield, I would definitely steal one of those. I mean, <laughs> I <would> definitely buy. <laughs> Jesus. Alright, and Kaden, you get to like you go with the smaller fours, and you see there's that half orc that you met the one time. His name's Bubba. <laughs> Bubba was good. Bubba. Bubba. Uh, none. Just really hoping the Black Rooster Clan survives the uh, water invasion. They'll be fine. We have. We are literally uh, immortal. We haven't died yet, so I, I cannot. 
I cannot be killed. All right, so I think now will be a time for you guys to cast your spells. Okay. All right. So they already know that they're not doing siege towers, right? It's going to be ladders. Right. I can cast projected um, illusion or programmed illusion. <laughs> you know, would it be better to? I'm just going to do major image, and so are the apprentices. We can cover the army in fog, um, a moving fog that'll stop the enemy from seeing them. All right, so are you from seeing the boats or seeing you guys? You said you wanted the boats to be seen. Yeah, but not the land. So, so the land ones are being covered. Okay. All right, I, I, just, I misheard you then. I was on You know what I mean? It kind of, that kind of reminds me of, like, in um, Macbeth, where they, like, bring the, like, there's, like, an army going from one place to another, and they're, like, all covered in trees and, like, camouflaging themselves with branches <laughs> from Burnham Wood. And that's what that reminds me of. Huh. Yes, I'm not. I'm not cultured enough for Jurassic Park three, but I'm cultured enough for Shakespeare. Boat. <laughs> All right, Barry, you're now on the boat. Roll me a survival check, real quick. All right. Make sure you don't get seasick. Um, what do I add? Eighteen. All right, you do not get seasick. Cute. As like you guys are on your little boats and the waves are hitting you. Like, are hitting the boats. And see some of the guys, they look a little nervous, but also a little eager. Do you have any words of motivation for them? Well, gentlemen, it is time for us to lead this battalion into, into the land, across the seas. Uh, if we got any AI support, we would do that, but unfortunately, I don't believe that's been invented yet. But, uh, look, I just want to say, I haven't known you guys for long, but I appreciate each and every one of you. And I I would like you all to treat each other as if you are brothers, because at the end of this journey, we are all one big, happy family. And I believe that this is going to go quite well. Now, on the count of three, raise your fists and say, Huzzah! One, One two, two. Huzzah! Three, huzzah! And then you hear a guy yell, Clear the ramp! 30 seconds! Let's go. And. So, how, how close am I between these guys? What? How close am I to these guys? Oh, you guys are kind of like, it's a small boat, so you guys are almost. Okay. Like, there's enough where you guys can, like, move around, but, like, not much. Are we, like, going into battle right now? Yeah. Okay. Um. You guys are heading to the, like, the heading on to where, like, their side of the beach where uh, you guys can, because you guys do have ladders to hit the the lake wall, since it is smaller than the land walls, like it's shorter. Okay. okay. I'm going to wait until we get there to cast a spell. So we get All right, then you hear the guy yell, 10 seconds! Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one, and the gate drops. I cast and what Crusaders. Do do? I cast Crusaders Mantle, which does what again? Holy power radiates from you in an aura with a thirty-foot radius, awakening boldness in friendly creatures until the spell ends. The aura moves with you, centered on you. While in the aura, each non-hostile creature in the aura, including you, deals an extra 1d4 radiant damage when it hits with a weapon attack. Alright, well, 
All right, so what do you do now? Do you just, like, yell them to charge off to the beach or something? Yes. All right, God. as you do, you, then you just instantly start seeing guys just drop. What? Have you ever watched the movie Pearl Harbor? No. Do you know what happened on D-Day? Yes, I know what happened on D-Day. This is happening. Oh my just God. not machine guns. It's like, ma- it's like magical D-Day. Oh, my God. Medieval D-Day. Now, you hear some guys trying to yell, like, shields! And people are trying to form up into, like, to get their shields to cover them. Okay. What do you do? Um. Well, roll me a perception check real quick. Okay. 17. You notice, like, like how the beach is set up, like, it's flat. And then it goes up a hill a little bit. And you notice the archers are actually in, not behind the walls, but are actually just on the hillside covered by rocks. Okay, so they have a bunch of cover. Okay. And you do notice another thing that, like, there's these carriages that have this. It looks almost like a. It looks like a crossbow, but it has, like, a. Like a. Almost like an arm crank on it. Okay. Kind of like and a, it's shooting like six crossbows in matters like six bolts in a matter of seconds. Oh, this is like a um arrow machine gun. A machine gun crossbow. Oh, I think one of the Mythbuster ones, hell yeah. Um Hey, there's a twenty two hit. Just hits. You get hit by three of the six crossbow bolts. Okay, how much damage? Ten points of damage. So five. I rolled low. Cool. Caden, roll me a perception check. All right. Stay on the table. Fifteen. You slightly just hear the screams of your comrades as they're getting shot down with arrows. You hear it, but you don't know what's going on. I I gotta keep moving the land forces. This is war. Like, yeah, I'm just saying like you're I hearing think... it, so that's in the back of your head, so. <laughs> what kind of archers are these? Like, what, what sort of race are they? They're lizard folk. Lizard folk, okay. And then you also, now you also notice, you see there's gnolls as well. And you see, like, gnolls are running down the beach to engage you guys as the archers are hitting you guys from above. So it appears they've hired more mercenaries. Okay. How far away am I from, like, Lizard Folk and all these people? About uh, 150 feet. Okay. Um, I'm going to move within this. Can I move within the 60 foot range of them? I mean, what's your, uh... Oh, my movement... Shit. My movement is going to be... 35. So I'm gonna move... I'm gonna do that... I'm basically gonna dash. So I can get within... 150, right? That's say 150 or 180? You said 150. Okay. That'd be... I would get down to 80. Okay. Okay. Um. Is it? Are we still going, or is it? Are we oh, going to Caden? Yeah. What's going on there? Uh. Back to Caden. Caden, roll me a perception check. Again. All right. I hope you know that I can't really see anything because I we are in the fog. Oh. That's that's how this is working. We're advancing in the fog. That's 11. Okay, uh, is high gear bad? Bad, I guess. You see, like, 
you you found out that there's a guy that's kind of like at the very edge of the fog, kind of like spying out. He's coming back saying like they're abandoning the the land walls and heading towards the lake walls, all of them. Okay. Oh, okay. So the enemies are. They've diverted they're about, the they're going to engage Barry because they're thinking this uh, lake invasion is uh, the full sail invasion, which is let's ending pick, right now kind of badly for them. Yeah, let's pick up our pace. Oh, and, boy. Yeah. Get, let's get in there, folks. But remember, you have to up until so we get to the wall. I don't know if you can fight, like, can't die. Wait, who can die? Wait, what? None what? of us we haven't died yet, so we don't even know if it's possible for us to die. True. So fight like you're immortal. <clears throat> because you are. Unless you aren't. Um, <laughs> Alright, well, you let's are. Go. Trust me. What's going on? The light, the the land the land walls are being attacked now. Yeah. Because everybody's now fighting you guys at the lake walls and Barry, you now see there's two gnolls and a lizard folk running right at you. Okay. Brawl initiative. Nine three six and eleven. Nine eleven nine and three. So I'll go first. Yeah, because I roll a six. All right. There was a lizard folk that went first, and he's going to attack you with his saber. That will be a dirty 24. It's. Eight points of damage. Eight points, okay. So half to four. And now he's going to bite you. Does a dirty 20 hit? No. All Actually, right. yeah, yeah, it would hit. Nothing about it. That's that's my. I forgot that was my um, AC. Yeah. Four points of damage. Four points of damage. So two. Now it's Noel's turn. He's gonna hit you. Jesus. Okay. Natural twenty with a spear. So that would be twelve automatically. Yeah. <sighs> 20 points of damage. 20 points? Okay. It's a 10. And now he's going to try to bite you. And uh, I rolled a 3. Oof. Now it's your turn. Okay. Um, how close are these guys to me? They're, they, were, they just were close enough to stab you with a sword and a spear and also bite you. Okay, so probably within like five feet, ten feet. Yeah. Flame strike these motherfuckers. Um, make me a dexterity saving throw. I'm gonna do a fifth level. Failed. Failed. DC seventeen. And failed. I think. Yeah, DC seventeen. Okay. Um, so it is going to be 4d6 radiant damage and 4d6 of fire damage. And because I have elemental adept, I get to reroll ones on fire damage. Or I think I actually treat ones as twos if I remember right, which is okay. So it's five because I rolled the two. That's uh, 17 fire damage. And 13 radiant damage for a total of 30. They're all dead. Cool. And because of that, the concentration of Crusader's mantle is dropped. Right back to Caden. I don't know what they're expecting me to do. I've got the ground forces. You're climbing guess, up the ladder now. Oh, I guess I'm climbing up the ladder now. I didn't choose to do this. Well, or would you rather just stand outside the wall? <laughs> and not die? I'll let the soldiers die. 
<laughs> okay, so what are you going to do then? <laughs> no, I'll climb up the wall. <laughs> Alright, you're up on the wall, and you're... You guys are up on the ramparts, and... You see there's about ten lizard folk, uh... But their backs are to you, and they're on the ground. What do you do? <sighs> their backs are turned to me. And they are... What do you mean they're on the ground? You're on top of the 50-foot wall. They're standing on the ground. Oh! Um, damn, I was kind of hoping they were on top of the wall because I could just thunder wave them off of it. <laughs> um, I guess if we're above them, Uh, I'll just upcast Fireball to, um... Alright, so you're casting a Fireball, there's some guys loading crossbows. Sure, okay. Um... They won't know what to hit them. Yeah. Upcast fireball at fourth level. At which level? Fourth. All right. So, what do I have to save? It's a deck save. <clears throat> That's a natural one. They failed. Oof. Can you hear me, Chris? Yeah, I'm doing the damage now. Okay. Thirty six fire damage. Man, oh, this smells like deep fried lizard in here. Ah, oh, yep. I. All right, let's get down the stairs and let's open the main gate to let the rest of the guys in. Oh yeah, fuck. Okay. Or and uh, and uh, you're you okay. happen to have been volunteered to be the first one to get no go down the steps. I was volunteered to go. I was volunteered, huh? <laughs> that. Cool. I'm gonna cast invisibility on myself. Uh, y'all chill up here. I'll be back. No, like they're coming down with you. It's just you're in the front of the line. Yeah, but if I go down while invisible, they're not gonna see anybody coming. Oh, they'd probably see the guys that are walking right behind you. Hey, that's why I'm telling them to stay up there. Okay, and uh, as you walk down the steps, you see the main gate completely abandoned. Nobody's guarding it. Epic. I'm gonna open that shit. And it's like one of those massive uh, palace gates. So, like, picture the gates of Minas Tirith. The what? The gates of Gondor. I didn't watch Lord of the Rings. What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, Zach, we're in culture. <laughs> Oh, you're getting it, about five guys to open the gate for you, with you. Do I? Um, I going to. Yeah, Why do I need push, one? Not a push. So you have to pull it instead. Push it. Well, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, I don't have anything to help me with that. Unless, what? What kind of mechanism? It, it's a gate that has to be raised? No, it just pull it back. It gets pulled open. Yeah, you know you get beat down with a battering ram? 
Yeah, so is it ropes and shit? Because I could just fire bolt the ropes to make it lo- the door loose. No, I'm just like, saying, like, you you grab hold of it and you start walking back, pulling it. Oh, uh, well, that sucks. Okay, well, guess I'm going back up. I guess I do, guess I do need you guys. Her up. There's nobody around. Okay, but yeah, get the fuck down here, guys. All right, you see about 20 of them, and uh, five of them give you a hand while the other 15 get into defensive formation. <laughs> Don't clap at me. And now you have opened the floodgates. <clears throat> now back to Barry. Okay. Barry, um, you guys are slowly making progress up the beach. Okay, are there any enemies that are, like, super near me? And no, they've kind of held back their infantry after the first assault, and they've okay. just kind of been, like, pulling fire until they know somebody pop out, and then they just let loose whenever they see somebody emerge. Thanks for the love. Okay. Um, so what? what do you do? You see there's some guys with shields there by you. Um, I'm trying to think of something here. Ooh. Um. I have an idea here. You see the idea that I'm thinking of this? No. No. This is a high level spell. Okay. I'm debating whether I should use this. But at this point, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to cast Holy Aura. Oh. Divine Light washes out from you and coalesces in a soft radiance in the 30 foot radius around you. Creatures of your choice in that radius when you cast that spell shed dim light in a five foot radius and have advantage on all saving throws. And other creatures have disadvantage on attacks against them. I get until the spell ends. In addition, when a fiend or an undead hits an affected creature with a melee attack, the aura flashes with a brilliant light and they must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be blinded until the spell ends. Uh, there's no demons or undead. It's all lizard folk and gnolls. Right. So, yeah, basically, it's just the people disadvantage to hit the um, the soldiers, and oh. we have advantage on all saving throws. So, boom. All right. Where is your, doing that? Where yeah. is your god now? Right here. I roll a disadvantage, and I I rolled nineteen, then I rolled a natural eighteen. So there's a twenty-four hit fairy. Yes. Why do you do this? With well, six I shots hitting Barry. Pop, 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 pop. Okay. Twenty one points of damage. How many? Twenty one. Twenty one, so eleven. Uh, sir, do you have any uh, any plan? We're kind of pinned down again. We're pinned down? What do you mean by pinned down? Well, you look around the beach and you see about uh, 2,000 of your soldiers have died on the beach. Shit. Uh, how many are left? 8,000. 8,000? Okay. Like, they're, like, still on the boats. They're, they haven't dropped their flop gates yet because mainly because they're nervous as hell after they've just seen 2,000 people drop and there's about 400 left alive on the beach right now. I believe in you guys. I believe in you all. We and can't even I... like we can't even get up the beach without with we don't have any cover. I, that sounded like somebody from, like, the south for a moment there. Just 
Keep going. All we have are these shields. Bash your way through. Do your best. But I mean, like, they're exposed on... If, like, they're singly running up the beach with just one shield. Spread so out. what position? Do failing. Seeing groups. I don't actually have the point. Wait. Hold on. Do you what now? What do you say, Chris? Uh, isn't the phalanx position a way to protect from that? I might be remembering wrong. Uh. No, it does not. I you know hear somebody it... yell shield wall from across the beach. Did this Barry hear this or or Caden hear? Yeah, this? Barry hears it. Okay. And Barry, you notice they're starting to like march in like pretty much in a turtle formation. Like they made the shields to where like it looks like it's a turtle. That's what I was thinking. Turtle formation. Turtle formation. They wish. That's what my soldiers are doing. That's what a small group of them are doing. Follow that lead. All right. Uh, roll Turn me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. And I have advantage. No, you don't. Not for this. Yes, I do. It's not a saving throw against you. It's just a see if you can properly fit into the formation so me oh so it's a dexterity check okay yeah check i'm in <laughs> my guy come on um i think it's a 15. you kind of get in yeah. there but uh your foot's exposed okay not the achilles heel natural <laughs> 20 <laughs> but with disadvantage remember because of that thing you casted Holy war, that... yeah. If they're in a turtle, for, turtle formation, they're under full cover. Wait, hold up. Uh, Barry's uh, foot was exposed because he didn't roll high enough. I uh, need to... Um... So well, they... I need to do a concentration check. See if Holy War is still up. Oh. Because they did, they did damage to me. So I have to do a concentration. It's, I think, half the damage. So technically, okay. I have to do a constitution save of at least 10. Because half the damage I took with my avatar battle was technically 6. That's not higher than 10. Um, my constitution, I have to roll at least an 8. That 20. <laughs> All right. So, uh, or the air, you just feel the, the arrow just like fly past your Achilles heel and it's like lands right next to your ankle. Oh boy. Zach, do you know the cover rules? No, his, he didn't roll decks enough, so his foot was exposed. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm asking for in general. I mean, like, you get a. Uh, those who, uh, say if it's like just a massive line of people, the people uh -huh. that are in the middle would have, would be attacked with disadvantage, while the people on the flanks would have regular, would be attacked regularly. Okay. Yeah, I just... But with the turtle yeah. formation, as long as everybody's in their pos proper position, disadvantage on all of it, unless it's a catapult. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah I with, guess... Is that shield. with Holy War? If a, if a catapult's launched that bunch of guys holding shields, I think a massive boulder and gravity's going to beat that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, although Joe would probably have a 10 minute argument with me saying that the Goliaths would be able to catch the boulder and throw it back even harder. If you're a monk, probably. But, um, yeah, monk. But like with well, don't forget. I'm pretty sure Jarrell has like a plus fourteen the strength modifier. Yeah, but still, but fair point. We're not. We don't need to go into that right now. All right. Well, you're slowly. You guys are slowly marching up the hillside, and your cover. Like, have you, you guys ever seen uh, that movie Wonder Woman? 
I've actually never seen Wonder Woman. I saw the first one. I did not see the other Wonder Woman movie. You know the scene? There's like a scene in the middle where they're like in the trenches and Gal Gadot is just being a fucking badass. Like blocking <laughs> everything. That's basically what I'm imagining is going on. <laughs> I swear, we're referencing so much pop culture in this episode. It's insane. All right, and Caden. Yeah, how's the, how are the ground forces doing? Because if they're doing good enough, I'm just going to abandon them to go help. Because I, I, you've told me multiple times that I'm hearing the... the uh, well, you guys are heading towards the... Uh... The, the uh, beach walls anyways. Oh, okay. You're going to sandwich them in between each other. Yeah. Alright. Well then, I'm still going to run ahead. That way I can sunburst these motherfuckers. Roll stealth. Because you, you can smell the lizard folk I'm now still invisible. If they, if, I can still roll stealth if they're doing... Uh, smell based. Um, no, I'm saying you can smell them. Yeah, but unless they could smell me, I'm still invisible. Ah, let's ro- let me roll see if they can smell you. Nope, I rolled a fourteen. Cool. Um. So I'll run up. And, uh, and you see there's like hundreds of them. Hundreds of them, yes, yes. Uh, but how much area are they covering? Pretty much like an entire, like, think four blocks straight. Oh, that's a lot of area. Um, Just think of a massive thunder wave. <laughs> yeah, um, thunder wave's area of effect does not go up at higher levels. No. What? <laughs> it's just damage goes up. I can see if that'd be a good option, but these guys are just normal lizard folk, right? They're not champions or anything. No, the lizard folk Januaries are protecting the Sultan in the palace. Yeah. Those are the elite lizard folk warriors. So these guys are nothing. So I'm going to take one portion. This is like town militia versus feudal knights. Yeah, I'm going to take... I'm going to look at one portion of their wall. And I'm going to... uh, And you see they have archers up on the wall shooting arrows down at the beach. Yeah, I'll see where there's the most condensed amount of archers. And I'm just going to sunburst. Them or the wall? I'm gonna gonna sunburst them. Sunburst can't target the wall. Ah. Um, But you know what could? Fireball? Maybe. Yeah, I don't think a normal, like, just a grunt can survive a, a sunburst, though. True, but a fireball could blow a hole through the wall. Right, but fireball's radius is 20 feet. Sunburst's radius is 60 feet. So I'm killing more of them if I sunburst there. I gotcha. And sunburst, that's fire damage, right? No, it is radiant. Uh, But does it cause any kind of fire at all? Uh... Brilliant sunlight flashes in a 60-foot radius centered on a point you choose within range. Each creature in that light must make a con saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes 12d6 radiant damage, is blinded for one minute. On a successful save, it it takes half damage and isn't blinded. Um, Well, before you do that, you notice they're starting starting to light arrows on fire and fire them down onto the beach. Fire arrows. I don't, I don't I don't know what you want me to do. I no, I'm just letting you know that's what's going on now that Barry's being posted with fire arrows. Yeah. And I'm going to get rid of I don't know how many archers this is going to hit. There's hundreds. All right, so let me but, 
So what? Do I need the roll? They all need to make con saving throws. I don't know if you're gonna roll individually. I don't know how many arches well, this is hitting. I rolled a natural one. Okay. Um. So that doubles the damage die. Well, let's just say roll the damage real quick, just solid. Just solid without the crit? Well, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, with crit. Okay, so I don't have enough D6s for that, so I'm going to use a calc real quick. Uh... Damn, that sucks. There's a lot of ones in there. That's 58 radiant damage on all of them. Well, they all die, and then you notice that then you see a massive, almost like an explosion on the wall. They're fire arrows. A guy dropped his arrow into the to the pots of oil. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to duck behind any cover that I can find so that they don't turn around and fire at me. Well, no, like, the, they're all, like, panicking now. Like, ah! And some of them are starting to run the opposite direction at the same time. The land forces are about to meet with them. Well, you guys can duke it out. I'm a dip. But I'm a little age boy. I'm a... And, and Barry, you're just hearing friend. like the sp- lizard folk screams from on top of the wall now. As you're in, as you're like inside the sh- shell of shields. Okay. Like you have no idea any of that happened, so all you hear is like a big boom, and then screams. And you're starting to notice that you guys aren't walking uphill anymore. You guys are on flat ground now. Okay. So, you're behind the archers now that we're on the beach. So, like, and you're starting to feel like people are like using axes or stuff to hit the shields. You said I'm behind the archers. But you're up on you're up on the same level as them now, so like they're not behind cover anymore. Okay. okay. Um, how far am I away from the nearest one? Uh, there's somebody hitting your shield right now with an axe. Um, back them up. So are you just gonna worry about to break the shields and just kill them all? Or can what I, are you gonna do? Can I like bash him with my shield? I mean, you can roll for strength, like roll like with your strength modifier and all that to hit. Okay, wait, hold up. So you said that we're we're all going in a turtle formation, uh, past the hill, try and get to these people. Like you guys have reached the top of the hill. You guys right. are probably about twenty five feet from the wall itself. Okay. And the other boats aren't gonna drop their drop their flop gates until the archers are completely taken care of that are on the beach. I'm taking care of this archer. I'm gonna bash him with my shield. Twelve. Alright. That's a miss. Fuck. Um Which invokes an attack of opportunity since you kinda like ha expose yourself. Does a 15 hit? No. Uh, can I do a bonus action attack? Sure. Okay. That hits. That's a... Wait. How do you know? Well, it should hit. I imagine we would have rolled a 14. So, 17 hit? Yeah, that hits. Okay. What's the damage on that? Is it like... Wait, what were you hitting with? Because it, my shield. Uh, D six. D six. Does it does it add anything? Like my strength modifier or? Yeah, D six plus your strength proficiency. Okay. 
Okay, so it's D6 plus 3. Cool. Uh, 7. Alright, and you hit him. Okay. And he stumbles back. Okay. Let me write that down. And then you hear someone yell, well, someone, a lizard folk yell, Northern nurse inside the city! Abandon your purse and run for your lives! So the archers on the beach are, bank, are like starting to panic and run. Come on, men! And then you just hear the flop gates begin to drop <coughs> down on the beach. All right, Kaden, you have, trying to avoid all that, you have stumbled upon the Sultan and his Janissaries. What? what? He, the Sultan's trying to escape. Oh, motherfucker. And, uh, like, you just happened to stumble upon him. He has not seen you, but you have seen him. Cool. Um, so, are we supposed to capture this motherfucker alive? I forget. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter, huh? <laughs> cool. I'm going to... <laughs> Damn, I already used my sunburst. What, cast shatter next or something? <laughs> oh, fuck. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> David Zach. Homie, I've got disintegrate. Oh, you can do disintegrate again. I've got Which does ten D six plus forty damage. Oh. The Sultan himself, I'm assuming is he a warrior? Yeah, he's a warrior. Oh uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know if he has would feel like a common or something like that. I mean, that's well, then, I, I guess I'll. I, I can't. I'm not fighting him on my own. I'm gonna cast Wall of Stone <laughs> as a dome to like, around only him on his entourage. Oh, now Lord. he can't escape. All right. So you have uh, the Sultan trapped. I do, and I'm gonna shout for Barry. Barry's still outside the walls. He's now climbing up a ladder. Um, Barry, you get to the top of the ladder and you see there's a lizard folk there and he's about to stab you. Okay. And he misses. And with that, you have the opportunity to like grab the spear and possibly yank him off the wall. I'll yank him off the wall. Roll Dude. me a strength check. Oh, that's I rolled a natural one. Hey, so that's a dirty 21. And you hear the whole wind helm scream. <laughs> and like as soon as you get like you guys start getting onto the walls, the lizard folk are beginning to break. And you see they're also stuck between the the wall and the land forces. Can Barry now see Caden like trying to signal him? No, oh, but Barry you're, can't you're, cast fireball if he knows how to. You're an adult. Well, I do. Okay, here's the thing. I think well, I have actually, to be Barry, a... roll perception check. See if he... If I, don't think I, I don't think I can be... Well, I don't think I can see him because, A, he's in a dome. Of no, stone. he's not in the dome. He oh, has yeah, the okay. Sultan in the dome. The, the Sultan's in the dome, not me. Okay. So, I would say with the, uh, with the fire, the one of fireball, I think you have to be attuned to that. Oh, so you don't know Fireball? No. That's, well, that's yeah, we spent, we spent uh, days traveling to the city. I, you could have spent that time. Yeah, fair it. point. I guess so. Yeah, I guess I would have attuned to it. Okay, okay. then, yeah, Barry cast Fireball. Okay, so I can't cast Fireball. Cool. Um, so do I still need to roll a Perception check? Yeah, roll Perception check. Okay, cool. So I did roll up to Nat 20. You do see Barry jumping. Well, you see Caden jumping up and down, waving his... Uh, <laughs> Uh, fucking, uh, pull. What's it called again? The stick? The quarterstaff? 
the core staff trying to signal you. He's literally like spelling out Barry with the quarter staff. <laughs> <My dad spread. laughs> oh Jesus. Okay. Um So what do you do? Do you cast fireball on the lizard folk down below or do you just go f- find a way to get the ba- to cadence? Can I do a sacred flame cantrip on him? What's that do? Uh, it's like I think it's like a D eight of fire damage or something. No, I think it's radiant. Radiant. It's radiant. I'm saying there's like a big glob of them down below. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, fireball. Um, use use a charge of that to do fireball. Um, I'm trying to remember what we said because you said DC fifteen, I think was for them. <laughs> I rolled a thirteen, so I failed. You rolled for thirteen. Okay. Um, third. Hey, um, how many, um, how much damage does Fireball do at third level? 86. Jesus, okay. Um, the Lizard Folk are dead. They're, they're already dead. Oh, man, I want to roll. Okay, you can still roll, but I'm telling you, they're probably going to be dead. They only have about, uh, 25 hit points each. Except for the Jane series, those guys are a bit beefier. Um, 31. Yeah. Yeah, they did. <coughs> They're dead. We're doing some fried lizard tonight. And see, they're just starting to drop their weapons. Those are still left alive. So what you do good. you do? You good, boss? Yeah, I'm good. I think, is it Chris or it's you that's coughing? What? I'm Just, not. Uh, <coughs> it was. Oh. oh yeah, well. Okay. The lizard folk have surrendered. Okay. That uh, on my girlfriend's calling me. Okay. Hello? Hey, yo. Okay, we're almost finished. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, love you. Bye. So what did you what did you say was going on? The lizard folk have surrendered, and you see Caden Be- still trying to get your attention. I climb up to the the wall and. Get to Caden. All right. What do you do? Now that you're at the Caden. Well, I'm going to immediately explain. When I see Barry running over, I'm going to say, Hey, so uh, I got the big wig. I got, I got Sol- the Sultan. He's over there. And I point to the mound of stone. You have captured Sultan Korbuga. Kaborga actually would be better. Kaborga. Kaborga. Sultan Kaborga. Um, what was that big explosion they had? Big explosion. What? Oh, part of the wall crumb like exploded after I cast my little sunburst uh, on it. They dropped. I guess they dropped some of their fire arrows into the oil. Oh, that's fun. Well. Well, I know at least 2,000 people have died on my end. How about your end? Now the body count has approximately come up to the 4,000. 4,000? I, ooh, ooh. I, I don't know how many troops I've lost. I told them they're immortal, and if they, I hope they believe that. Um, About 500 uh, of them died. Ah, well, 500 of them were, in fact, not immortal. <laughs> uh, you guys also had the yellow man surprise. Yeah, we... Like, imagine something like that actually happened in real life. Yeah. The defending army would not have stood a single chance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I... 
I'm going to. Are we, what do what do we do? I don't have a way to contain him. Like just keep him knocked out. After that, <laughs> let me see if I do. <laughs> spell ends. And um, you see, like you know how you guys had that little <gasps> hole for casting spells out of. Oh, I know. I know what to, to hit do. the Balrog. I know exactly what I can do. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, what were you saying, Zach? You got, you know how there's that little hole you guys used to blast the spells at the Baylor while you guys were inside of it? Yeah. Well, outside that little hole, you see a, a sword with appears to be like a pair of white underwear. I didn't put a hole this time. They carved one in. He carved... Okay. Okay. Jesus. I, okay. <laughs> or like a white flag of parlay. Is is that your underwear? He responds in draconic. I speak draconic, so I I can hear I can understand that. Yes. Willing to surrender, hand over the city, go west, or well, go east and never look back. I know he has guards nearby. Tell your guards to reveal themselves. And dis- They're and inside to- the thing with him. No, I said that I specifically c- captured him and, and him alone. Uh, yeah, okay. that's true, yeah. The guards are kind of so- just stuck on the other side, like, we're over here. Toss your weapons so- over the wall. I want to see did. them. Well, they were as they were saying that. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll, um, so he is, he's waving his underwear on the edge of his sword, right? Yes, and then he drops his sword out of there. Okay, I'll remove the wall of stone. Let's talk peace. All right, and he offers you a drink. No, no. <laughs> Which in lizard folk culture, if they offer you a drink, they mean terms of peace. Oh. <laughs> okay. Not gonna drink it. Yeah, okay. It's a type of wine from like, made from like a, tastes almost like a dragon fruit wine. Okay. Um, before we, you know, this is still a battlefield. So I yeah, am going he does to, look at you guys and say it is a little corpsey out here. I'm going to hold a fireball in my hand. And I'm gonna say, I'm going to need you to command your generals to cease all just to, to, like to, to fuck. Just cease all combat right now. I he need. grabs a horn and he just blows it. Uh, hold up. <coughs> Porn sound effect. And you see up in the citadel, they're, white, they're like pretty much throwing down white flags. Right, to initial a full on surrender. Done. Ma- Max is. And well, you guys have now secured your goal. In the face of overwhelming odds. Unfortunately, Barry, do you remember the man who set these events in motion? Um, is that a chance? No, it's the Grand Priest. Oh, Grand Priest, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Well, unfortunately, he did not live to hear the news that the city had been taken. He died two weeks before the 
two weeks after the city was taken. Do you know how he was killed? Old age. Old age. And rest in peace. It was a human, so. Yeah. So now, most of the northern soldiers, their vows fulfilled, have soon returned home to the north. Only a couple hundred of them remain in the south to protect the city. Under the leadership of one Guthrum. Guthrum. Named Defender of the Holy City. Not like are you guys going to stay down there or are you guys going to head north? Stay down like here in, in Lombard? Like permanently live here. I don't know if I could ever live in a place that's been a battlefield. All I see is death happening all around. <clears throat> well, hey, uh, boy, one guy kind of tells what I you, do. Hey, Caden, if you go to the Imperial City, they have a mages college. Oh, like a wizard's college. Did. Was Barry saying something? No, this was the guy saying. Uh, no, some uh, yeah, just random person Max, was telling you that. Max started saying something. Oh, I'm at sorry. The same time. No, That's why. Um, I was saying. I mean, war is kind of like my life. It's battlefields are kind of like my my home turf. Uh, yeah, battles not- happen to find Barry somehow. Well, I'm a warden main cleric. It's kind of how it goes. That, that, if that is how you wish to lead your life, uh, I shan't stop you. But and if you have to call my help again, I'm always here to help a friend. However, I am not a warrior, and he, he's going to like flex and show that he has no muscle. <laughs> I. Here's, here's my thing. While I am a warrior, while I'm a man of battle, there's one thing I care about more than um, about fighting a good fight. That thing is being a good father. And I've been necessarily the greatest father to my daughter Kyla. I um, mean, you know, uncles have been taking care of her while I've been off. And while I could live here for as long as I can, for years and years and dozens and hundreds of years. I want to make sure she's safe. So I couldn't do that. At the end of, at the, end of the day, I need to re- I need to return to where she is, and I need to make sure that I need to help out my brothers and make sure that she is raised right, and that she can live a long, healthy life. Just With like we always intend for her to. Zorgon. Wait, what? I say with her new husband, Zorgon. Who's Zorgon? I do I, I have to explain this to you every time. The guy who hit. Oh her, yeah yeah. Or, yeah yeah I know him, but you talking about the one. Her. You know, like I kidnapped her. Right now. <laughs> now that and Caden will, uh, like give Barry a pat on the back. If that is a cause worth fighting for. Um. Uh, I will. I, I want to help make sure that you get back to her safely. So I'll continue. I, I can continue to travel with you for a while. But this mage college is temporary. All right, and roll perception check for all both all of this. Yes. If you're, I think you just have to explain it because, like, I like we don't play a lot, so like I I will forget. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, twenty two. Seventeen. You see an ancient bronze dragon flying, uh, approaching you guys. Oh my god! A bloody dragon! Whoa! Whoa! And I upon it is that. Barry's daughter. It's feldspar. And as the dragon lands, it shape shifts into what the hell was it again? A human or what? Um, it could shape shift into whatever the fuck it wants. It, trans- it changes into a human. 
as long as it's within like a CR twenty two, because that's what ancient bronze dragons are. They can polymorph into that, or it transforms into a human. <sighs> and it <laughs> says you, ah, oh, Barry. I'm, uh, your daughter wanted me wanted me to find you. Well, you certainly had some good timing. I appreciate you bringing her along. And I'm sorry. And as he looks looks at Katie and looks down at the puddle of urine beneath his feet, I did not piss myself. <laughs> Fel- Felspar, I don't believe you. Yeah, right. this is. Don't this worry, is my... I don't believe you. It's just wet. This is my illusion wizard friend, uh, Caden. He's a nice guy. He's a hell of a... Don't worry, Trish, the uh, bronze dragon is a friend. Yeah, I I get that he's a friend, but Caden has never seen a dragon before in his life, and it just fucking casually landed and started talking to Barry. He's gonna look over to Barry and say, like, "Do, do you have any other odd friends that I should be aware of? Um, there's a wizard who is a dwarf. There's an elder giant. Uh, what's his name? Thremnok Ruby Buckle. I haven't seen him in a hot minute. The Eldritch Giant. Eldritch Giant, yeah. Um, there's a demigod. Demi- wait, what? A <laughs> demigod. What? Oh, is that he Oh, Chan? No, Mal. Well, him too. Oh, Malachi, yeah. Throw Malachi. Uh, Umbra. Now, Umbra is a. He's a quarter god. Oh, yeah, fair. <sighs> with, oh, and they're also friends with, uh, with Yarrow Gary. I am going... You know, suddenly, right. my mortality is creeping up on me. Realization right, well, hey, guys, this is gonna wrap up today's episode. <laughs> All right. Sorry, my girlfriend's just home, so. Alright, well. See you guys later, alright? Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed today's session.